Y'all was peace time. We're here. Hallelujah. Y'all spirits here. Hallelujah. We have the word. We have the spirit. We have people. We have joy. Hallelujah. As we come before him and thanking him for all the blessings throughout our lives. You know, the older you get, the more you think about that, too. How he's directed our lives in the past. He's watched over us, covered us, you know, healed us. How many of us have been really sick sometimes? He picked us up. Hallelujah. And we're here. And we're walking and talking. And he a little bit, too. Praise be to God. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you that you've given us another day. Sunshine in day, too, Father. You gave us rain in, in this feast, but you, you said if we keep this feast, we'll get rain. So we want both kinds, Yahweh. We want that physical rain, which we need here in Michigan, but also we need your Holy Spirit, Yahweh, to rain on us, Father. And touch us, Yahweh, so that we know that we are connected with you, Yahweh. Hallelujah. And in your guidance, and your directing us, Father. Hallelujah. So, Father, as this goes on, and in, in this, even this day today, we're asking you, your Holy Spirit, to be in our meetings and direct us and direct the speaker, direct the testimonies and songs and everything, Father. Because we are your people, Father. And we know at the end time, it's all we got is you and the Holy Spirit to guide us, cover us, direct us, Yahweh. Hallelujah. So, Father, we're in your hands. We love it. And thank you, Father. We ask all this in Yahshua, the Messiah's mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So our dear sister here is going to lead us. Well, let's have the Shema. Have it open here. <coughs> you ready, James? Okay. I need you to turn this on. 
The words to this were from an elder that was part of our assembly, Elder Otto Meisel. He was reading this like a poem, and I was hearing this melody. So it's fill me out. <laughs>
Fiat Chrysler Daimler Corporation, each to furnish 10 to 12 high top 15 passenger vans to America Forever Free for three years, that we have transportation to go knock on every door across America, pray with the people, offer salvation, and an invitation to a cook up that you know, we send the harvesters and we provide the additional amounts to purchase the remaining. 60 high top bands. My name is Yashua Hamasia. Thank you, Yashua. Thank you, Father. 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 This great feast that they're having just as much, just as much of a good feast and, and wonderful worship of God. Hallelujah. Thank you. I'd like prayer for Harp's family. We spent some time with them last night, and uh, of course, the topic of the feast came up and over and over and over again. So, that those seeds would be good and watered and bring fruit. Hallelujah. Yes. Okay, who's next? Um, I'd like to ask for prayer for, um, we have a neighbor who is uh, also, he, he rents for my parents, and um, <clears throat> he's Muslim, but uh, he's been, you know, uh, a good renter, and, you know, don't really have any complaints about him or anything, but anyway, um, He's got pancreatic cancer, and they don't give him very long to live. So, um, and his, his wife is a believer, so. Okay, what's his name? Speak to me right now. Do they ask me 10 minutes or what I'm going to catch? Okay, all right. Stop, All right, thank you. Well, it's per request. Put your hands up. Steve? Well, I was speaking this morning about the per request day for yesterday. Somebody said that they uh, prayer for somebody that was uh, having marriage problems. I don't know who that was exactly. Um, I was thinking about my situation years ago about uh, how I fasted for seven days <coughs> when my wife left me and uh, how an angel. Told me to go to Niles, Michigan. Um, we attended that fast, and we're, they didn't know anything about what was going on. And the people uh, down there working the gifts of the Spirit with knowledge and uh, prophecy and that. So they told me three things. They said, Yahweh's yeah, got a message for you. And um, first of all, the message was what Satan was doing, trying to destroy my marriage. Okay. These people that you ask prayer, that ask prayer, they're fighting against the evil spirit of division and divorce. You need to speak against that and the authority of Yahshua's name. Or break that bondage of what the enemy's trying to do. The second part that was told to me about what my part was to do to, um, to speak peacefully to my wife and certain things. The second or the third part was what Yahweh was going to do about it. And that occurred in that was in March or April of '93. Uh, um, so I asked her that these that the people that they're asking for prayer for their marriage to be restored, that they speak against this evil spirit, because it is an evil spirit, because Yahweh hates divorce. And that, that, they, that they find it in the name of Yahshua, both hand and foot, and that the pit of hell and stay there. That is my prayer. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the advice there. Hallelujah. Any questions? Jerry. I would like to give thanks for the rain we've had because it has been, rain has been needed very pleasant and it's not really caused any, we've not really had any difficulties dealing with it because it's been, what we need has been, most of us have been uh, soft rains, not real hard rains, but a few places. But anyway, we've got rain that we, want to be thankful for because we needed it. The ground was dry. We're having very beautiful weather. Very nice weather for the 
feast. And people are enjoying it. We're not sick. So I'd like to pray that the enemy would be restrained, that the sickness would not be permitted to come into the camp, the unclean spirits would be restrained, and that Satan and his government and the agencies that he works through will not be exalted. We don't want to hear about them. But that the kingdom of Yahweh and the government that he's establishing through his Torah, that it be exalted. Thank you. Hallelujah. Beautiful prayer request. Hallelujah. Um, if you would pray for my friend Cindy, she was here Friday and Sabbath and Sunday. And first time she ever was around a feast for anybody at Yanni or Hebrew or any songs like this or anything. So um, please pray for her that seed will be planted in her heart and uh, she is needing, I think, a new group to be able to meet with now. But that she'll be encouraged and her health is kind of poor, so I pray for her health too. And thank you, everyone, for being so friendly and giving her a good impression. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you. Thank you for bringing her. Hallelujah. Okay. Well, anyone else has a request today? Paul? Savior, and, and, and I mean uh, Yahweh, seen through Yahshua, but uh, we, we think of that as a, a really great time. But, uh, but they shall, it said there, they shall see him whom they pierced, and they shall mourn. And uh, I guess that's their time for repentance. So, just pray that this that we may continually repent. Thank you. Hallelujah. Good. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Okay. Bobby Donald, I'm gonna have to have you in my prayer. Okay.
Yahweh thy Elohim hath cut off the nation, whose land Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee, and thou succeeded them in the wall in their cities, and in their houses. Thou shalt separate three cities for three in the midst of that land, which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee to possess it. Thou shalt prepare thee a way and divide the coast of thy land, which Yahweh thy Elohim giveth thee inherent into three parts, that every slayer may flee thy land. And this is the case of the slayer which shall flee, either that he may live, whose killeth his neighbor ignorantly, whom he hated not in time past. As a man, as when a man goeth into the wood with his neighbor, to do wood in his hand begges a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and had slipped from the health, and the light upon his neighbor that he died, he shall flee unto one of those cities and live. Lest the anger of the blood pursue the slayer while his heart is hot and overtake him, because the way is long and slay him, whereas he was not worthy of death, inasmuch as he hated him not in time past. Wherefore I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt separate three cities from thee, and if thou with thy Elohim enlarge thy coast, as he had sworn unto thy fathers, and give thee all the names and comments to give unto thy fathers. If thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them, which I command thee this day to love Yahweh thy Elohim, and to walk ever in his ways, then shalt thou add three cities, one for thee beside these three. That innocent blood be not shed in the land, which Yahweh thy Elohim give thee for an inheritance, and so blood be upon thee. But if any man hate his neighbor and lie in wait for him, and rise up against him, and smite him, mortally that he died, and believe him to one of these cities. Then the elders of this city shall come and fetch him, thence and deliver him into the hand of the avenger of blood, that he may die. Then I shall not pity him, but thou shalt put away the guilt of innocent blood with Israel, that is, may go well with thee. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmarks, which they of old time have set in thine inheritance. Which thou shalt inherit in the land that Yahweh thy Elohim give thee to possess it. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or any sin, in any sin that he sinned. At the mouth of two witnesses, or at the mouth of three witnesses, shall the matter be established. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before Yahweh before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent in question, and behold, if the witness be false witness, and hath testified falsely against his brothers. Then shall he do unto him as he had thought that done unto his brother, so shall that he put the evil away from among you. And those which remain shall hear and fear, and shall henceforth Commit no more any such evil among you. And thine eyes shall not pity, but life for hold for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, book for book. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, hallelujah.
Thou goest out to battle against thine enemies, and seest horses and chariots and a people more than thou be not afraid of them. For Yahweh thy Elohim is with thee, and brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And it shall be when ye are come nigh unto the battle, that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people. And shall say unto them, Hear, Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint, fear not, and do not tremble, neither be ye terrified because of them. For Yahweh your Elohim is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. And the officers shall speak unto the people, saying, What man is there that hath built a new house and hath not dedicated it? Let him go and return to his house, lest he die in the battle and another man dedicate it. And what man is he that hath planted a vineyard and hath not yet eaten of it? Let him also go and return unto his house, lest he die in the battle and another man eat of it. And what man is there that hath he trove the wife and hath not taken her. Let him go and return into his house, lest he die in the battle, and another man take her. And the officers shall speak further unto the people, and they shall say, What man is there that is fearful and faint-hearted? Let him go and return unto his house, lest his brethren's heart faint as well as his heart. And it shall be when the officer hath made an end of speaking unto the people, that they shall make captains of the armies to lead the people. When thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it, then proclaim peace unto it. And it shall be, if it make thee answer of peace and open unto thee, then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee, and they shall serve thee. And if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then thou shalt besiege it. And when Yahweh thy Elohim hath delivered it unto thy hand, thou shalt smite every male thereof with the edge of the sword. But the women, the little ones, the cattle, and all that is in the city, even all the spoil thereof, shalt thou take unto thyself, and thou shalt eat the spoil of thine enemies, which Yahweh thy Elohim hath given thee. Thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very far off from thee, which are not of the cities of these nations. But the cities of these people, which Yahweh thy Elohim doth give thee for an inheritance, thou shalt save alive nothing that breathes. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hebites, the Jebusites, as Yahweh the Elohim hath commanded thee, that, that they teach you not to do after all their abominations, which they have done unto their Elohim, so should you sin against Yahweh your Elohim. When thou shalt besiege a city a long time, and making war against it, to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them, for thou mayest eat of them. Thou shalt not cut them down, for the tree of a field is man's life, to employ them in the siege. Only the trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for food, thou shalt destroy and cut them down. And thou shalt build bulwarks against the city that maketh war with thee, until it is subdued.
And all the elders of the city nearest to the slain man shall wash their hands over the heifer and who, whose neck was broken in the valley. Then they shall answer and say, Our hands have not shed this blood, nor have our eyes seen it. Provide atonement, O Yahweh, for your people Israel, whom you have redeemed, and do not lay innocent blood to the charge of your people Israel. And atonement shall be provided on their behalf for the blood. So you shall put away the guilt of innocent blood from among you when you do what is right in the sight of Yahweh. Female captives. When you go out to war against your enemies, and Yahweh your Elohim delivers them into your hand, and you take them captive, and you see among the captives a beautiful woman, and desire her, and would take her for your wife, then you shall bring her home to your house, and she shall save, shave her head and trim her nails. She shall put off the clothes of her captivity, remain in your house, and mourn her father and her mother a full month. After that you may go into her and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. And it shall be, if you have no delight in her, then you shall set her free. But, but, you, but you certainly shall not sell her for money. You shall not treat her brutally, because you have humbled her. First born inheritance rights. If a man has two wives, one loved and the other unloved, and they have born him children, both the loved and the unloved, and if the firstborn son is of her who is unloved, then it shall be, on the day he bequeaths his possessions to his sons, that he must not bestow firstborn status on the son of the loved wife in preference to the son of the unloved, the true firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the unloved wife as the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he has, for he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. The rebellious son. If a man has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and who, when they have chastened him, will not heed them, then his father and his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of the city to the gate of the city. And they shall say to the elders of the city, this son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all, <clears throat> then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones. So you shall put away the evil from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. Miscellaneous laws. If a man has committed a sin deserving of death, and he is put to death, and you hang him on a tree, his body shall not remain overnight on the tree, but you shall surely bury him that day, so that you do not defile the land which Yahweh your Elohim has given you as an inheritance. For he who is hanged is accursed of Elohim. We see some parallels here on our Savior passing. And, um, they got him down right off the tree, didn't they? Off the stake. And uh, Joseph of Marathia put him right in his tomb, didn't he? They had to do that all because the high Sabbath was coming up. So some of these, uh, you can see, uh, they did observe them during the New Testament, didn't they? So, um, Look back here. Um, they had that first reading, uh, they had uh, cities of refuge so people could go there and the things would cool off, and that was good. And uh, so they uh, be a little more uh, sensible on uh, finding out what the problem was. Now we have in our own uh, Land now, we've got some people that are called salvation cities. They've set up, and it looks like to me that that's kind of against the, the federal government, but that's uh, I'm not going to get into that. But uh, anyhow, we're seeing things like this happening right now, too, aren't we? And uh, the 14th verse, we talk about the neighbor's, uh, the neighbor's landmark, that still is pretty prevalent. You know, 
lot of places, especially in the, in the cities and so forth, and where the land is really tight. Um, I've heard a lot of people be in, 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 into court action with that. So it, he's telling us there, you know, leave it alone, you know, especially someone that's been there for many, many years, you know. <clears throat> so in the, the 20th chapter here, hear over Israel, you know, and uh, picking out somebody that's going to fight. Uh, right, and uh, so it, it's, uh, if there's some that's fearful and faint hearted, don't let them, just let them go back home, you know. And uh, so there's different things that, that happened here. And these uh, picking soldiers. So it's all good advice when Yahweh writes these things down, you know. And has his prophets write it down. So he talks about those in, in the field, dying and so forth. And the elders, and somebody having a rebellious son. Well, we don't do that today, but uh, that's pretty serious, wasn't it? We had a rebellious child, we took him up before the elders of the city. So, uh, these are good guidelines and uh, things that we can <coughs> take into consideration, and that's why he wants us to read them, isn't it? And to uh, uh, think about it. The writer of the firstborn here is talked about, too. Um, and that's uh, something that's still uh, out there too. So uh, we're, we're thankful to all these words that Yahweh has given us, and we're just reviewing them again, aren't we? And uh, but every word of Yahweh is what we're supposed to be considered. Considered, and we're thankful for this. Thank you, brethren, for reading this word today. Hallelujah. We'll continue on reading too. Right, we usually have a song right now, but we're just going to eliminate that thing and uh, have our speaker come on. Mike, you ready?
Uh, my calling is actually an evangelist. I've been ordained for 25 years. We do a lot of prison ministry. But we're led to teach things that are normally not taught in the assemblies. Spiritual gifts, spiritual warfare, movement of the spirit, and prophecy. He gives us a lot. This book, if some of you already opened the front cover, I think the last update was about May or June 2016. He's already given us much more than that, even since we've been here. Even just being here, there was more. This is coming like a flood now. We're so close that he's, he's feeding us for those who are listening and understanding and seeking. He's feeding us with a fire hose. It's moving. The Spirit is moving. And we have talked, and you have talked with others here in the building and the, and, and the group, who have a sense of urgency. How many feel that? Hallelujah. All right, you're, you're the group. I'm here. There's a sense of urgency. The Spirit is moving. We see by all kinds of signs and things on the inside and outside that we're going headlong into this, and it's sooner than we thought. That's the motivational step about presenting this today. Silas? Silas? We're ready. Ready, Silas? Silas, are, is he on? You ready? Are you ready over there? Okay. You're, you're, you're on. Welcome, everyone, to a uh, mini seminar on the Book of Revelations. And we greet everyone on the outreach video here. This is the Assembly of Yahweh Eaton Reverence. And Sam Graham is pastor and presiding here today. We're in our fourth day, the ninth day of Jan October. We're in the fourth day of our feast. We're having a marvelous time. We've been blessed by music and praise, messages, encouragement from one another, and, and just being strengthened and lift up in all kinds of areas. We are blessed today. We hope the out, to the outreach that this presentation will also bless you. As we said, we are closer than we think. We feel this sense of urgency. We see signs on the inside the assembly and outside the assembly that we're, we're heading into deep trouble. Things are getting worse all around us. We see signs, especially in the year of 2017, this year, we've seen signs of the impending things to come, of tsunamis, forest fires, 8.5 million acres burned up in the northwest, unnatural hurricanes this year coming out of the Caribbean, earthquakes, wars, rumors of wars, Matthew 24, unprecedented flooding, immorality, like Sodom and Gomorrah is everywhere and now basically legal, all right? We've seen blood moons, eclipses, star constellations based on Revelations 12. If you saw any of that study, we saw that here. There is an intensifying level, unprecedented level of darkness that is coming over the whole population of the world. And some of it's coming into the assembly. It's oppressing, it's demonic, we feel it. And it's serious. This is another witness that we're getting to. <clears throat> More brothers and sisters in the spirit are fulfilling Joel's prophecy of 228. I want to read that to you. Even false Christian prophets, which we shouldn't be watching on the telephone or television or the internet, are going crazy about prophecy. How many know that? They're, they're, all, they're just oh, yeah. intensifying also. They're excited. They know even though they don't know, they know something's coming. Yeah. Joel 2, 28. And it will come to pass, afterward, after that I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, that your sons and your daughters will prophesy, your young old men will dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. That's starting already. That's starting already. Wow. And when you read Joel, what is Joel talking about? 
He's talking about the day of Yahweh. Is it the day of Yahweh? Yes. No. It's the day of Yahshua. He's king of kings. He's coming back with a sharp two-edged sword with the seeds out of his mouth. He is going to judge the wicked, wicked. He will not only shake the earth, but he will shake the heavens. He's coming, not Father Yahweh. Oh, all of us understand that. <laughs> Yahshua's coming earlier than maybe we thought. There is even, I believe, a new theme that's emerging in this assembly and this feast right now. We can plan a feast, we can look up key scriptures, we can be led, but Yahweh and Yeshua are going to take charge. That's what we want. All right. All right. Right. There, is, there is an emerging theme that is coming into the assembly. And we've heard words of wisdom, prophecies, we've heard songs and other testimonies about this. And the emerging theme is Yahshua says, turn unto me. Now, I'm going to give you a witness that maybe that's actually true, whether you perceive that or not, because Yahshua is in charge of the entire tribulation. He's the one in charge of who's going to be saved, who's going to be blessed, who's going to be fed, who's going to be executed, who's going to be eliminated, and it's damn serious. Four billion people, according to the prophecy of the Old Testament, two-thirds of the population are going to go away. We need to approach this in reverence, in relationship, in faith, and with understanding. So we start, need to start getting into the prophecies and getting next to him. He's going to tell us what we need to know. We are standing face to face with Yahshua, King of Kings, Master and Master, Sovereign and Sovereigns, our husband, and he's showing us what he's about to do. He is Master of the Sabbath, and he's also Master and in charge of the tribulation. So it behooves us, I love that. My mentor used to use that. It behooves us to study and know and understand these things. That's right. Right. Now, that's all the motivation I got for you, folks. Now it's going to get exciting. <clears throat> I want you to take, you should have this. In fact, it's a two-side paper. I want you to take the page that says Revelations and Prophecy Seminar. And I'm going to tell you what I hope to do the next three days and give you kind of an outline because you'd like to know where this is going. On the first day, numbers one and two, we're going to try and cover one and two and expand that a little bit. There's only two points there. The key to understanding the book. The book is not written like a novel, as you probably well know. It's broken up into sections, and there is a reason for that, because for a thousand, well, <clears throat> almost two thousand years, this book has been a secret. It's almost like Yeshua doing the parable thing when his apostles came in and said, Master, Master, your program is not working. They don't understand anything you're saying. And he said, but it's not revealed to them. It's revealed unto you. This book is not revealed to them, it's revealed to us. And we're going to get into that. Number two, the main theme of the book. What is, have you ever analyzed and stood back in the forest and tried to understand, all right, I know there's trouble coming, it's going to be bad, blah, 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 and then he will appear, he will appear, appear, the sun will be dark and the moon, the sackcloth, and he will appear in great glory. And we will meet him in the sky, and as my wife says, we will escort him back. We're not going to heaven. We might go to the first heaven, but we're not going to stay there. So we're going to understand the book of Revelation, but also have you ever asked yourself, okay, what, what is the four, three or four main reasons that has to happen? What is the main work? Why is it important? What do we need to be plugged into? What can we do? What part do I have in this? Because 
We're the end time generation. That's right. That's right. I'm 72 years old and I still think I'm going to be part of it. We have the light. We have the truth. We have Yahweh. We have Yeshua. We're the only ones that can help <coughs> us and serve Him and help fulfill this. Because it isn't just about Yeshua. It's, it's the two witnesses. It's 144,000. It's us. We're all part of this. And we have said, we have proclaimed, we have raised up our hands and said, we are here to serve. We are here to help. We are to, here to do your will. So, if there are some of us who are saying, I hope I can survive. I hope I won't be killed or my, or my parents or my children. It's going to be bad. And, and think about what Worldwide Church of G.O.D. said, that we're going to flee somewhere crazy like Petra in the Middle East, a pagan temple. <laughs> and hide out over there with no smorgasbord, no food, no water, no Mennonites. <laughs> if we shrink back, it says in Hebrews, one of Sam's favorite books, we shrink back, he will take no pleasure in us. Yahweh and Yahshua do not respect, authorize, support, or encourage fear. Amen. That is of the enemy. I love the confusion that Sam said the other day. That, that's of the enemy. Thank you. We have a mighty king who is able to make the heavens and the earth and Israel walk through the waters bound up on walls maybe a hundred feet high we heard. He's able to use us to do this and fulfill his will, which is his Father's perfect will. But we're part of this. So this idea that maybe has gone through your mind that, well, you know, I, I hope I can get through this comfortably. It's not too bad, and it's, it's going to be tantamount to the flood. We have seen major judgment on the earth. Yahshua was in charge of that also. Father Yahweh has given Yahshua a, a kingdom. Yahshua is king of kings, master of masters, sovereign sovereigns. Yahweh is preparing also to set his son on his appropriate, warranted worship throne in Jerusalem. He has never taken that. And he's worthy to receive all honor, power, worship, dominion, glory, and honor forever and ever to the honor of our Father who is above heaven. One of the reasons, I'm not going to tell you all, but one of the reasons about this is for him to take that throne to set up a righteous worldwide kingdom that is based on righteousness, Torah, and the Word. And bring his people together. There are four major reasons for the, for the tribulation. And all those reasons, all those principles, are yea and on me. We're waiting for that. We're waiting for our beloved husband, and we're waiting for righteousness to be restored. You can look it up if you want to. I'll tell you what it says. Yahshua quoted in Luke 1927. He said, bring those here before me who would not have me reign over you and slay them. Father Yahweh has said in 1101, sit at my right hand till your enemies be made your footstool. He is not going to let Yahshua come down here, take his throne, and spend the next 25, 50, or 100 years battling wickedness and rebellion. He's going to start out clean, he's going to start out fresh, and it's going to be Kodesh. Hallelujah. Is that good news? Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, back to the outline. Number one and number two, we're going to try and do that today. And then you can draw a line under that, under number two, and then under number five. So the second day is three, four, and five. The second day, tomorrow morning, is three, four, and five. The secret of Yahshua's plan, the two witnesses and their sealing, and the man of sin.
which is a very, very important topic out of chapter 12. The third day, which is tomorrow night, third session, is 6, 7, and 8, Judgment of Jerusalem, the whore. I hear all the time, oh, let's go to Jerusalem, let's go to Jerusalem. Not, not right now, I don't think so. Jerusalem is called the whore, Sodom and Gomorrah, the woman in red. Number seven, the signs of the timing of the end time. Remember I said uh, about 23 minutes and a half ago that we will know when he's coming? How many believe that, that we will know when he's coming? Oh, yeah. There is a study on that, and we're going to do that study. It's not going to be a surprise. Right. I won't tell you too much. <laughs> Number eight, the time of the tribulation and the time of Yeshua's return. We'll know when that's going to happen. Right now, I want you to take out this sheet, which should be, I think, the other side of that outline. Yahshua has always told Israel what was coming. How many understand that? How many know that? Okay. Not Yahweh, Yahshua. It's the key to prophecy. Don't read the book. Jim? No, I'm asking her sheets the book. Pardon? I don't have the sheets of your story. Okay. There's a sheet right here. I want to prove to you by a pre-study here that everything we need to know is in the book. He has to give us the revelation and open the keys to the book and then we will know. We will have understanding. We are to worship in spirit and in truth and wisdom and understanding. Wisdom and understanding. Get wisdom and get understanding. Yes. Without that, the seven spirits of Yahweh, Isaiah 11, we can't do this. This is spirit driven, it is spirit controlled. Yeshua is in, in control. If we are not plugged in spiritually to Him in a close relationship, we're not going to hear what we need to hear. That's, that's where it is. It's in the book. But the Spirit works through the Word. Yes. That's right. Otherwise, it's just black and white pages. <laughs> All right, take this page that says Yahshua has always told Israel what was coming. I want to prove this to you. People in the Old Testament, 500 years or more, knew when Yahshua was going to start his ministry. How many have seen that study? All right, I'm going to lead it through you just real quickly. You can look at it and study it later. later. <clears throat> we talk about Matthew 24, Talibet, uh, Luke 21, Matthew 13. But you need to look at also Exodus. Exodus is a picture of things to come. There is a parallel there. All right, that's part of the prophecies. Also, Daniel, the beloved, he was one of the five men when I came up in August and talked up here about suffering from Messiah. He is one of the five men that was called beloved. He had a special relationship with Yahshua, even in the Old Testament. Daniel was given 2,500 years of prophecy, which he understood now. Go rest, Daniel, with your fathers. You rest in your life, blah, 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 blah. It's things to come in the future in chapter 12. Many people knew when Yahshua was coming, when he was going to start his ministry. The book of Daniel was written approximately 537 B.C. 500 years even before the change of the era. Yahshua started his ministry in the fall of 27 A.D. and he was impaled three and a half years later, 31 A.D. in the spring. Those two dates we should have memorized. Those are important dates for other reasons, other studies, other information. 31 AD, 25 April, 31 AD, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Do you realize that he was on the state six hours? One hour for all the plan of salvation. That's how precious, how important how set apart that sacrifice was. One hour per thousand years. For the humanity 
that was in those blocks of a thousand years. The prophecy of his coming was given 550 years prior as based on Daniel 9.25, you have it right there, you knew I was going to say that. 69 weeks, the prophecy of 69 weeks. I'm not going to explain it all, but it's, it's on the sheet. Daniel 9.25, okay? Now therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore the building of Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Yahweh Jerusalem, unto the Messiah, ooh, the word, the person, Messiah, the one we've been waiting for, the prince, shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. The streets shall be built again, and the walls, even in troublous times, they have their swords on their hips. Understand that from the going forth of the commandment to Messiah is 69 weeks of years. Okay? So, the command is from, or the timing starts from the time that the command comes forward. The 69 week, uh, weeks of years starts in 2 Chronicles 36, 22-23. Now, in the first year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, that the word of Yahweh, Yahshua, was spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished. Yahweh stirring up the spirit of Cyrus, the king of Persia, that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put also in writing, saying, In writing, Medes and Persians, it cannot be changed. Thus saith Cyrus, the king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth hath Elohim of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him in house in Yahushalayim, which is in Judea, who is there among you? Who is there among you of his people? They were in captivity. Yahweh of the Elohim, be with them and let them go up. Let them go up. They're going to be released. They're going to go back. They're going to be healed. Okay. Cyrus's proclamation, which is also found in the next. Book, Ezra 1, 1 through 3. You take the 69 weeks of years, 483 right down there, the addition and subtractions right there. The decree was given in 457. You subtract that out, you have to account for the year zero, and you come out with 27 AD. Some people who had scrolls and had some understanding and taught by, by some of the scribes or whatever prophets, some people knew that this man, this one, who would redeem us, would come. That's amazing. That's amazing. The prophecy was given approximately 550 years ahead of time. So, I, I'm not a very smart guy. Let me ask you. Have we got 550 years, 551 years, till Yahshua comes back? So we're inside that number a little bit, would you say? Maybe 10, 20, 25 years? We don't know. And I don't know. I'm not saying I know. We're, we're going to find out some other secrets. But we're close. We're very close. What an honor for us to be in this generation and to see these things go forward. You realize that? It's not an accident we're here. This is a great honor to be in this era of time. Yes, it is. Wow. To see him in the air. John 15, 15, just add some icing on top of this that we will know things in advance. He tells us in advance. He said in John 15, 15, he tells us, he says, everything the Father has told me, I'm going to tell you. So he's given us a mandate, he's given us a statement, he's given us a promise. If we believe, if we want it, if we want to understand. Okay. I want you to go to the book now. 
And I know some of you don't have the book right now because there are many United copies, or at least the first part of the book for you. There are 21 chapters in this book. And what we are talking about now, and I ask you to make notes, and you can make notes in the back of the book, if you have, if you have a book about what I'm going to tell you. I want you to take out a pencil or a pen, if you have one. Uh, you need to do this, what I'm going to ask you to do. Take out a pencil or pen, and open the book. We couldn't put this on slides. Open to the chapter index, right here. What we're talking about now is how to understand the book. No page, it's an index. It's a trick. It's a trick. No pages. No page numbers. We're talking about how to understand the book. I'm going to give you some basic key guides to understand the book. And then, Tonight, tomorrow, when you get back home, you have time, apply those keys and understanding, and the whole book will open up to you. Up to you. Okay. All right, Deborah? Are you still with us? Okay. We have an introduction to the book. Under chapter 2 and 3, which says, Letters to the Assemblies, okay, the letters the letter chart, draw a line under that, under two and three, under that section. That's, that is a block of instruction that is just unto itself. Okay? It does affect the rest of the book, but it's a block of instruction just to itself. It's very important to take the postscript this or if you're looking this way, the introduction and the postscript, move it away so you can see what the main body of the book is. You need to do that. All right? Go down two chapters, chapter four, chapter five, and under chapter five, the book of judgment. All right? Draw another line. That is a section of instruction. Don't worry, Mike. The next set of instruction, block of instruction, that you study in a block is six and seven, seals of the book and sealing of the 144,000. That's a block of instruction. Now, <coughs> move over, when it says sealing of the 144,000, move over where it says chapter seven, see that just to the right, put a plus sign and put 11. 7 and 11 go together. You have to read 7 and 11 together. Now, can you already see that the book is laid out in, in a difficult, disorganized, disjunctive order? Because it was a secret. It wasn't supposed to be easy to read. So we see God's hand in this. We see this. All right, number eight, chapter eight, and eight and nine, the pouring out of the set-apart spirit, we're, we're going to tell you when the spirit's going to be poured out. How many would like to know when the land of rain's going to happen? Because yeah, it's going to be a circus. Oh boy. It's going to be big. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be so exciting, you won't have to wear a costume or anything special. <laughs> All right, pouring out of the spirit, chapter eight, and first four, Trumpets, eight and nine, that's a block. That's a block. Then, uh, it's all by itself. What you're going to have left at the bottom of the left hand page is the return of Yeshua. How many understand, uh, how many think that Yeshua comes in chapter 10? They've studied this. How many? Think that he comes in chapter 10. It says he comes in chapter 10. No comment? Be careful. This is wise. Okay, nobody <laughs> said anything. Right. Uh, 
when you get up to the top of the right hand page, you're going to already have taken care of the two witnesses, chapter 11. That goes back over to 7. All right, the next plot of instruction is chapters 12, 13, 14, 15. That's a block. 12 through 15 inclusive. The Bride of the Woman, Mark of the Beast, Three Angels' Messages, Picture of Victory. The next section is 16, 17, and 18, Vials and Trumpets, and there is, if you want to write under Vials and Trumpets, if you want to write in there, there is an actual diagram we spent weeks on, comparing the seals, the trumpets, and the vials, and they're all similar, especially the vials and the trumpets. The trumpets are the main plagues, but the vials are the same plagues intensified about tenfold. How many know that? Under there, under number uh, vials and trumpets, you can put diagram page 27 if you want to write that in. Diagram page 27, right under vials and trumpets. And it gives you a comparison. Bing, 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 of everything, of all the, all the plagues. Uh, the woman, the Scarlet Beast, that's not us, that's not the set apart woman, that's the whore, the Scarlet Beast, and Babylon, Jerusalem has fallen. So those three, chapters 16, 17, 18, that's a block of instruction. Now, it's very interesting, but I'm not going to talk about it right now, not immediately. But on the bottom of the left-hand page, and toward the bottom of the right-hand page, we have two similar statements, Yeshua's return. One is chapter 10, and one is chapter 19. All right, the last block of instruction is, is post Millennium, after Yeshua's thousand year reign, which is chapter 21 and 22, that's another block of instruction. I'm not going to go into that at all. Any questions so far? I'd like to be able to do some Q&A, uh, a few questions here and there as we go along. Okay. I want to take you to page one, Jim. Page one. us. 
the angel that was talking to John about these things, and Yeshua also, I heard a trumpet behind me, right? Trumpet. But we were told by Yeshua that there were things that he hated, things that he didn't like, things that were going on in the assemblies. Some people have surmised, looking at this and looking at their assembly, if they visit another assembly or another assembly, there's approximately, gee whiz, seven assemblies, Yahweh assemblies in the United States. It's just a coincidence, right? We all have problems. The assemblies and the leaders are trying to do right and to lead, follow the Spirit, and not, especially not because they know about this, not let these things come in. So these letters are very important to us. We ought to know this as the flock and the leaders need to know this, and they do, to make sure these things don't occur in the assembly, because Yeshua made it very clear and very displeased about that and wouldn't tolerate it. Wouldn't tolerate it. Number two, this is the big one. Ex-military, Deborah, foot stomper. Circle number two. This is the key to understanding the book of Revelations. This is the key, the main key. The book of Beverly's working on it. She's thinking about you, Jim. Oh, sorry. You can make a note. You can make a note. All right. This is the main secret, the main ins insight to understanding the book of Revelation. It seems to repeat itself. And it does. Who is Yahshua? He is many things. He wears many crowns, he has many hats, and he has about 40 offices that he functions in that the Father will not usurp or take away or operate in. We need to know what those offices are so we know how to pray. But he is a military commander. He is a general. He is Sabaho, Yahweh Sabaho of the host. Yes. And yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The elephant and the top, the bright and morning star. Yes. He thinks in military Terms and military ways sometimes. And he is a general. He had three generals underneath him, one of which was deposed with iniquity. He was found in him and he was cast down. How many know that Satan is cast down twice? How many know that? All right. He was cast down with iniquity. He was found in him because he was not set apart anymore. And he's about to, if he hasn't already, with some of the things that have gone on lately in 2017, he's cast down again because he can't come up as CEO and accuse the brethren. He says he's right. the accuser of the brethren. People say, oh, Satan attacked me. Satan did this. No, he didn't. He's got millions of spirits to, that work for him that do that. He's CEO. He doesn't, he doesn't have to do that. He's white collar. Black power in this case. <laughs> you know the Catholic Church. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> Satan is about to be cast down, but he can't up and accuse. Uh, can't come up and accuse the brethren anymore. So he actually gets thrown out twice. And it's very important for us to understand when we really get into the tribulation that he is, in chapter 12, thrown down at some point, and he's wrought. He's torqued. And he knows the book better than we do. And he knows that he, what? Has a short time. And he's going to go after and hurt what he has hated from the beginning. I'm just going to give you an introduction to that, because we have some extra time. Who, what, where, what did Satan want years and years, thousands of years ago? What did he want? What was the thought that came into his mind and his heart that he said? What did he want to do? He wanted to take Yahweh's place. He wanted to be in Yahshua's position as son. Yes. 
Right. Hebrew said, what, when was an angel ever called my son? When did that Yahweh ever adopt an angel as a, as a son? Not, not so. But he has been jealous of Yahshua, wanted his throne, his power, his recognition, and his honor. That's the whole, his whole bottom line. So, he is to be thrown out because iniquity was found in him. Who, so, Yahshua is his enemy. But he, he learns, he's, he's pretty smart. He knows that Yahshua has a good plan. He knows he's got good ideas. He's got good insight. He knows how to organize. He's a good manager. He's good at everything. Hallelujah. So he copies him. He's not an original thinker. We have a true day of worship. He has another day of worship. We have set apart moments and times and appointed times and Bob and uh, Pastor Graham have made clear that we know very, very well. All right? Oh, he has his times too. They're ugly. He's going to come down with great wrath, which is the main part of the book of Revelations. And he's going after the second thing on his list that he hates. What is it? I love Revelation 12. The woman. Who's the woman in Revelation 12? Don Esposito. Don Esposito wrote a paper on this. Some of you saw that. And he was given some good information which he gleaned off the internet and other places. And he, he knows the scripture well too. He does a good work in Jerusalem. But he didn't understand it. And he didn't say it in the study on the sheet. He just said the woman. We are spring-loaded to understand and believe when you say the woman is talking about the bride. It's talking about us. The ecclesia, the called out ones, the elect. That is not who Satan hates. We're worldwide. We're almost invisible. No power, no position, no responsibility much. We're invisible. Nobody really cares about us. He's not here. I was going to mention his name. He hates the woman who brought forth the man child. Verse 12 or 13, right there in 12, 13. Who brought forth the man child? Who has been degraded, slaughtered, persecuted, and, and discriminated against for thousands of years? Israel. Judah. Who brought forth the man child? The man child that was called up to heaven? Judah. He hates Judah. Folks, I'm getting ahead of myself. The tribulation is a worldwide epic event. But ground zero is Jerusalem. How many know that? We have a man come in. I'm just going to give an overview. A man come in and he's going to take Jerusalem by force, blah, blah, blah. He's going to set up, set up an image to be worshipped. He's going to have his own prophet and says, yeah, this is the guy. This is the guy. Look to him. And he's going to set up a mark. That main stuff happens in the world that they said thousands of years ago, the world. What was the world thousands of years ago? Mediterranean area. Roman world. The empire in that area. Not global like we think today. It's not global. So most of the destruction, most of the plagues, most of the horror, most of the judgment is going to be in the Middle East. We need to understand that. Okay, here's the key. The book of Revelations, when you take out the preamble, when you take out the postscript after the uh, millennium, is two parts. Uh, chapters approximately uh, 2 or 3 to 10. It's right there written in the book, number 2, Jim. And chapters 11 through 19. Here's the key. When you read the book, the first couple of uh, the first chapter set of about 3 through 10, and it looks like he appears in 10, but he can't appear in 10 when everything is not done, right? Can't be. Impossible. 
But it's very clear when you read chapter 10, it's talking about his return. What is going on here, Yeshua, military general, Deborah, you ready? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you what I told you, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you what I told you. So you will get it and remember. That's the military way. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm out of that. But that's Yahshua. So, when you read this chapter 3 through 10, and you see that he's, he's, this, there's all kinds of indication of him, him coming, that is introduction that he's saying, I'm going to show you what's coming, but it hasn't happened yet. I'm going to give you a preview. How many do that? Okay. Doug, you get extra credit. You get up here there. Okay. The real tribulation and the real events are chapters 11 through 19. He actually returns in 19. And when you read it, there's no doubt about it. He returned. That's the chapter of return. Okay. So now when you read the book, you, you take away or do a separate study on the front part and move the back part away a little bit. And when you read those 3 through 10, you're thinking, this is what's going to happen. It's not happening right then. When you get that concept and understand that, the whole book opens up. The whole book opens up. It's not confusing anymore because it seems to duplicate itself, and it does. It's not really a duplicate. All right. Number three in the book here, Jim, we'll get you a book. Yahshua appears to, uh, appears to return twice. We talked about that. He is also... And you have it in your books, and you don't have to write it down. He is also, in chapter 9, you have three woes. Woe is a bad word. That's kind of like whammy. You got the whammy? Well, whammy and woe are real similar. One might be Greek or Latin, I'm not sure. I didn't do the study on that. In chapter 9, there are three woes. What are they? Who knows? Give me one. The pit is opened up of all... Tartarus, Tartaru, where all the other spirits that serve Satan are let loose. And they don't go after us. They're going after the wicked. Satan and Yahshua and, are not, and Yahweh are not at war. Job chapter 1. Satan can only do what he's given to do and allowed to do. Everybody know that? He's not a free agent. No. So, to punish the wicked, Yahshua opens this pit in chapter 9. And the, this, this, this black cloud comes out of Tartarus like locusts. These are demons. Right? The second goal is the two million million man army that comes down toward Jerusalem. But the third goal is Yahshua's return. Because when he returns, and we heard Dennis talk about it several times, he's not here today, he's going to gather the nations into the Valley of Decision, Jehoshaphat, Armageddon. And he, there's not going to be a war, there's going to be a major execution of two billion people across the earth, where the blood comes up to the brightest. It's nasty, it's bad. I don't know if we'll have any part of that. He will just, he will just do that and it will be done. Okay, number four. Seals of chapter 8 and 9 are the same as the bowl plagues that are in 12 through 16, only more intense. And as we said already, I got in myself number five. The woman in chapter 12 is not the body. It's Judah that he goes after. And she flees to the wilderness where she's protected. And the earth helps her. That's not Pasadena, California. Six, the great city in chapter 17 and 18 is Jerusalem, which is called the whore, Sodom and Gomorrah. And that is, that is ground zero for most of the trouble and most of the uh, judgment that occurs. We've already said number seven, and seven and eleven go together to two witnesses. I'm going to talk about that. And I know, I know, 
years and years, that a lot of people have different opinions about that, who the two witnesses are. <coughs> I'm going to offer some clarification about that, but you can believe what you believe. It's not a salvation issue. It's not a salvation. Oh yeah, and there is a sin that's not under death, so. Never mind. <coughs> number eight. The bulk of tri the tribulation we said of the Mediterranean area, number nine. True believers who are dedicated, obedient, have a relationship with Yahshua, will be protected. Hallelujah. He promises that right. all through the scripture. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Who's the good shepherd? Chapter 10. Who's the good shepherd? Who is or where is the shadow under the shadow of the Most High in number 91? Yeshua. He's our husband. He will believe us. Trust us, love us, embrace us, protect us. But not all of us. Not all of us. I spoke a small message, I think it was in August, that uh, we dedicated to Robert J. Wells, our dear brother. Some of us are going to be martyred. How many are willing to be martyred for him? Do you realize that <clears throat> all the apostles were martyred except John? John had another job to do. But do you realize, uh, even when you read the Fox's Book of Martyrs, we cry, we, we feel that burden, we, we are terribly grieved that these men who hazarded their lives gave up everything. They can't even say, we've given up everything. What is our reward? They did. They gave up everything. And some of them were family men. Peter was married. Sometimes we will suffer for his sake, the ultimate being martyrdom, so that he can give us a greater reward when he comes. Not that we're looking for that, but it's our honor and his privilege and his desire to do that. He loves us, especially those who serve him. Night and day. It's an honor to die for him. Honor. We're going to die anyway. Why don't we make it worth something? Yeah. Right? right? I want you to turn over to page chapter 10, page, page uh, 10. Page 10, where it has the assemblies, its rebuke, and so forth. <clears throat> we have Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, who had no negative comments at all, and everybody wants to leave their Philadelphia, and Laodicea. <clears throat> On the left hand side of the page, you have the negatives and the criticisms and the things that he is commanding, I should have commanded the assembly to repent of. And on the right hand, uh, he's talking about their rewards. Okay. There are, most of us have read most of this, but I want to tell you, and I'll talk more about it, about Ephesus. And so, to read about Ephesus, because Lisa asked me if I was going to go through all every scripture. I want you to go back to page four. And we have a letter to Ephesus. Page four, left hand side. Under the angel or the messenger of the assembly of Ephesus, write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven candlesticks. What are the seven stars? The pastors, the messengers of the assembly, the elder, the head elder of the assembly, right? So he's writing right to them. I was talking with Terry the other day that we both agreed in, in great seriousness that 
it's scary to be ordained or be placed in a position like that. It's, it's, it's scary because pastors are responsible. Who is the center of the menorah? Yahshua. Yahshua. He feeds the other ones, doesn't he? The other six. What does a lampstand represent in total? <coughs> the seven spirits of Yahweh. Out of 11, chapter 11, Isaiah 11. What happens if Yahshua comes down and he decides at some point, he says here, verse 2, I know your works and your labor and thy patience, and how thou hast not uh, cannot bear them that are evil. And that house you have tried them, which say they are apostles, and they are not, and has found them to be liars. And has borne and has patience for my name's sake. And has labored. They worked. They labored. They bore the heat of the day and has not fainted. Nevertheless, here it comes, verse 4. Make sure you uh, circle this, Jim. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you, against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. This is one of the reasons for the tribulation. Who is our first love? I'm going to talk about that more. There are four reasons. For the tribulation. I'm not sure. I think I've spoken about an hour and 15 minutes. Is that about, is that about right, Silas? We want to thank you for your patience, your understanding. Tomorrow we're going to get right into the book and do a lot more, get more serious, even though this was a little serious. And so I want to take time just for a few moments. Uh, I don't know if it will be on camera or not. Any questions or comments at this time? Bob? Brother Bob? Okay. Yahshua and Yahweh bless you. Make his face shine upon you, be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance upon you, and give you his shalom, his wisdom, his understanding, and blessing, and desire your heart in him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.
but I thought last night this was the song I was going to sing today, so it seems to fit. Hallelujah. I have special picks that have to go on a certain page. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs>
함께 감사하니요 할렐루야 할렐루야 할렐루야야 Majesty King of Kings Yes you are Son of God Wonderful Redeemer Good Shepherd of my soul I need you Now and forever. You are the power to change me from within. Do this mighty work within the time, my Yeshua. I have wasted much time, forgive my wastefulness. Help me now, O oh Yeshua, I want to serve you truly. Hallelujah, 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 Yeshua. Majesty, King of Kings, Yeshua, Son of God. Wonderful Redeemer, who shall I hold my soul? I need you now and forever. And he's going to start the work that he's studying now. He's going to finish it. So let me give thanks. Thank you, Yeshua, for giving me. For you will make me holy. For this is your commandment, and only you can do this work in me. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. For you will bring it to pass. Hallelujah, 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 Yeshua. Majesty. King of King, Yeshua, Son of God, wonderful Redeemer, good shepherd of my soul, I need you now and forever. Be blessed. He loves you and I need you.
I think this is a simple song, but she tells you a big story and tells you how we should be. And um, that's what you're always looking for. You know, when you go down to that watery grave, you know, you've just given your heart and yourself to the Father and to the Son. That's what you do when you go down to that watery grave. So you're not your own anymore, folks. Really. That's the way I look at it. So everything from then on, you're supposed to be His. Hallelujah. Everything you do, think, say, you know, we're His. Because He paid the price. Hallelujah. Well, we can't play anyone. Can you play one? Okay. The narrow way, 81. Come and enter in at the gate.
three. I'm going to just take one, one, one selection and I have two here. 122. 122. 115. Okay. Now, wait, well, I'm going to take one. What do you want? 122 and 115. Okay, Joe, 135, 122, 115.
large fan here. We have another mic for Debbie. And there's a mic, there's a mic stand over here. Maybe you can bring that over there, Ryan. Okay, the next one we're going to be doing while they're getting that. We got a portable. Well, you can put it right on that stand. You can put it up. She'll have got a beautiful voice. That mic's over there, and she's got a mic. One, uh, 115. Keep the love and joy. <coughs>
And uh, when you talk, you can talk to somebody, and you've got something to say. Yes. It's not just for now, but forever. When you encourage somebody to look into the book, or to accept the Savior, you know. And you, so that's, those words are good. And then not only for now, but for all, all time. Hallelujah. Different than uh, the Michigan, Michigan State game you just talked about. <coughs> or when the Tigers, or the Lions. You know what I'm saying. You know? So when it's done, it's done. But when we talk about Yahshua, it's future. And it, that's what we want to talk about. The future. Hallelujah. It says, in the midst of that street of it, and on the either side of the river was there a tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. So it means when there's twelve months in the year, huh? And the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. And you know, uh, more, more and more people are finding out about these leaves um, that are good for us to help cure us. Huh? So uh, I noticed the body has entered into another cycle about uh, learning about herbs and things. And uh, usually they don't have any side effects too, unless you take a way of a lot of them. But usually these herbs and things are good for us. Hallelujah. And uh, so we need to uh, educate ourselves more on them too. And there's a lot of things growing around. Sister. Uh, I walk is going to show us some more things tomorrow. There shall be no more curse, but the throne of Elohim and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Hallelujah. And there shall be no night there, and no need of the candle, neither light of the sun. For Yahweh Elohim giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto them, These sayings are faithful and true. And Yahweh Elohim of the holy prophets and his angels to show us, his servants, the things which must shortly be done. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And Brother Mike wants to show some things to us. And I, John, saw all these things and heard them, and when I heard them and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then said he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of the brethren of the prophets, and them which keep the sayings of this book, worship Elohim. That means worship Yahweh and Yahshua. He said unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Behold, I come quickly. My reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And this 14th verse is the one that we usually focus in on many ministers, preachers. Blessed are they that do his commandments. And we know we have a blessings in the, coming up in Deuteronomy 2, don't we? 27, 28. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have a right to that tree of life. That's our, that's our focus, folks. That's our uh, vision, isn't it? And it says if we don't have a vision that we will perish. And many enter in through the gates and to that city. And there's going to be without, or without our dogs and sorcerers, whoremongers, murderers, eye doctors, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. We have to make our choices, don't we? And we want to make our choice for the kingdom, for Yahshua, and all the blessings that will be there. Hallelujah. So I, Yahshua, have sent mine angel to testify unto you of these things in the assemblies. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. <clears throat> Let him that hear us say, Come. So the invitation is out there, isn't it? When that word to come. And that a thirst, come. 
And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these words, or these things, Alan shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. We have that in two other places also. If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Alan shall take away his part out of the book of life, out of the holy city, from the things which are written in this book. Hallelujah. He which testify these things saith, Surely I come quickly, Amen. Even so, come sovereign Yahshua. And I think we all can echo that, can't we? Hallelujah. The grace of our Master, Yahshua the Messiah, be with you all. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, guys, want to come up and do the air writing blessing? Hey, Sam, can I give a testimony? Oh, okay. Yeah, earlier, um, I, I brought up the prayer request, you know, for our family, and so I just wanted to give a, an account of what happened last night. Um, you know, there was numerous times where, you know, people were asking what, what we were doing, so the word was out that we were keeping the Feast of Tabernacles. So different ones had come up to us to say, what are you doing? You know, and um, so at one point we were at the table, and, you know, I was just saying, well, we're camping out, we're singing praises, and we're... You know, getting into the word, and we're just having this, you know, great time. And um, my sister-in-law, I had this look on her face like she was scared to death of my answer, even though she asked it. You know, and so, um, and then I, you know, at first I said, "Well, I just call it my Yahweh party." You know, our Yahweh party. <laughs> you know, we were just celebrating Yahweh. You know, and um, and then she started. You know, they kind of like turned the subject for the right away. And then. Um, but then um, my sister-in-law started, she's a um, principal in school, and she had to correct one of the teachers that's a new sub, and she was, um, you know, had to kind of, you know, show her how, you know, he has to go through these steps and have problems with kids and stuff, and so there's 10 ways to, you know, get these kids to get their attention. Anyway, but she said, you know, twice during the class, you know, one of the kids raised their hand and said something, and she said, that was a perfect opportunity for you to just take that and run with it. You know, and then she said, and then one of the boys raised his hand and said, there was a full moon. And and right away when she, you know, here she's telling my sister Wanda, and I'm sitting here inside like, yes, 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 we don't got to take it and run with it. So, um, and, you know, I was like at the edge of my seat. And, just, <laughs> and she, she said, yeah, you should have taken that and just run with it. And I said, and she says, it was a brilliant moon. And I'm going, yeah, it was. And then I just blurted out, and it's the beginning of tabernacles. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and she said, you know, just like in the scriptures. And, uh, but of course, you're not supposed to talk about that at school, you know. But, you know, just that perfect opportunity to present the Feast of Tabernacles, you know, in, in the full moon. So, so Hallelujah. That's an example of how we can talk to our relatives. Deuteronomy blessing is number six. 22.7. And Yahweh spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them all together, Please, Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. Yahweh may his face shine upon thee, and be gracious unto thee. And Yahweh may lift up his countenance upon thee, and give thee peace. The nation put my name on the children of Israel, and I will bless them.
Beverly has those books done for those, so you see Beverly, those that didn't get a book. This afternoon. This afternoon. Mike went to town to make more. Oh, okay. Well, Heavenly Father Yahweh, we thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. This day, through your feast tabernacles, the bright sunshine that you've given us. We ask a blessing and hands and food to prepare it. We ask this through your son, Yeshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.